Hey everyone, Knowledge here with Reach Your Summit. In this video, I'm going to go over some of the gear that I like to use when I'm out winter backpacking. So the winter season has arrived here in the Northern Hemisphere, and though it doesn't feel like it lately in the Northeast, I thought this would be a great time to put together a video to show all of you certain gear that I like to use on my winter backpacking trips. I've had a lot of you asking what I like to use when I'm out on the trail during that season. So I'm going to share with all of you some, but not all, of the gear that I like to use when I'm out backpacking in the winter time. Winter backpacking is going to be completely different from three season backpacking or longer hikes. It can be very rewarding, but there's also a lot less room for error. So with that, I like to do a lot of extensive trip research before I even head out on the trail. Different factors are going to be things like the conditions, the trail that I'm on, the location, and what my personal goals or objectives will be. Winter here in the Northeast can vary greatly. Sometimes I'm going to be carrying a lot of extra weight, a lot of extra bulk. Other times I might still be able to get a little bit closer to what I normally carry during three season. And though during the three season, I like to focus on hiking all day and spending little time in camp. I also really enjoy simplicity and minimalism and keeping things as light as possible. During the winter time, that's less of a focus of mine. I'm going to be hiking a lot less just due to the amount of hours of daylight that I have in the winter. The conditions can also be a lot harsher and again, that room for error. So safety and comfort are going to be even more imperative in the winter time. So I'm going to kick things off with the big three and then I'll go over clothing a little bit. And then finally, I'll go over a couple of other items that I'll use during the winter time. Now the backpack that I choose for winter backpacking is going to vary based on all of the trip research that I mentioned. So if the trip allows, I'll still try to push for a frameless hip beltless pack or in this case, a frameless pack with a hip belt integrated into it. This is the Palante Desert Pack. Pretty spacious and I can fit quite a bit inside of there. I really love frameless hip beltless packs throughout most of the year, just because I love the freedom of movement and how it just kind of conforms to my body and my back. I find them to be very comfortable and I've been really happy with the Palante packs. I have a video going over all of my Palante packs on this channel, so I'll leave a video link for that video in the description for this video if you'd like to check that out. On certain winter trips, I've even been able to get away with some of the smaller packs in that video, like the Palante Ultralight or the Palante Joey. It just depends on all of that trip research that I'm doing before I'm heading out on the trail. But most of the time, I'll use something with a frame and a hip belt. And that's because I'm carrying heavier items. I might be carrying bulkier items. A framed pack is going to give me a good amount of support. It's going to transfer most of the weight to my hips and help it be a lot more comfortable. So over the last few winters, I've been using the Hyperlite Mountain Gear Southwest 3400 or 55 liter pack. And if I need to carry extra, I've also been using the Hyperlite Mountain Gear Southwest 4400 or 70 liter pack. I own the thicker, heavier materials for these specific packs. So this is a five ounce per square yard Dyneema composite fabric. Had great durability with this. It's been fantastic with carrying snowshoes on the outside. There's also a bunch of lashing points so I can carry my trekking poles or my ice axe or my crampons. I've used this pack 
in conditions down to minus 25 degrees Fahrenheit. Haven't had any issues with delamination, no rips or tears or any problems with this pack. It's been a workhorse, it's been fantastic. It is highly water resistant and the seams are taped, so it's great in snow and freezing rain. I haven't had anything get really wet inside of the pack. And I've been able to carry 30 to 35 pounds comfortably with this pack. And having the extension has been great too for the bulkier items that I'm going to be carrying in the winter on certain trips. Now my shelter is going to vary as well, depending on a whole bunch of those different factors. And I've been able to use tarps on certain winter backpacking trips. I've used hammock systems. I've used bivvies on their own. And I've even been able to get away with using a three season tent. I really enjoy using pyramid style tents the most in the winter time or setting up my tarp to be in either an A-frame or a pyramid style shelter because it tends to work with the wind the best and then also the steep walls help with shedding snow a lot better but certain conditions might also call for a four season tent rather than all of the other shelters I just mentioned so for those very specific winter trips where a four season tent is required need something to take heavy snow weight under really harsh conditions or if I'm going to be exposed a lot more and I have a lot of heavy winds that are really driving into my camp area. I'll use something like my Mountain Hardware Direct 2 tent. This tent can be pitched from the inside and it can withstand really strong winds, a lot of exposure, a lot of heavy snowfall and freezing rain. But this is specifically for those types of conditions. I'm not going to be using this all of the time in the winter because it might not be an appropriate shelter. So for a lot of my other winter trips, I've been using the Hyperlite Mountain Gear Dirigo 2 tent. This is a tent that I purchased when it had first come out. I took it out on a winter trip just to see how it handled and it worked really well. So I continued using it and I've been really happy with how it's been performing in the winter time. This is more a three season tent, not considered a four season. So I'll use this in areas where I might not be as exposed. It does have its limitations, its benefits, its drawbacks, just like any other shelter. But overall, it's treated me well, sheds snow decently, and it also sheds the wind pretty well. I haven't had any issues with durability with this tent. This has a thicker Dyneema composite fabric, a lot thicker than a lot of my other lightweight three season shelters. It's still a pyramid style and it requires two trekking poles or two ski poles. So if I'm cross country skiing and this is my shelter, I can set it up with those. Or if I'm backpacking, I can set it up with my trekking poles. And to pitch this or any of my other shelters in the winter time, I like to use snow stakes or I can use a snow anchor. These are going to be a little bit different than my traditional nail peg stakes I use during three season. And this bites into the snow a lot better. So it gives me a good amount of anchoring and helps me keep my shelter in place. And because this tent is more three season, it does have a lot more mesh than having solid walls going up the inside of the tent. So for times where I might expect some snow drift coming in with the wind, I can bring a lightweight bivy with me. And this is the Bora Gear Cuban bivy. This is very, very light, only about four and a half ounces and barely takes up any additional space in my winter pack. This will help give me a little bit of protection from the snow drift. It's also helped increase my sleep system by about three to five degrees Fahrenheit. And I'll just put this inside of my tent or my shelter to have that extra protection. And I have a video on the channel going over this bivy. So if you wanna check that out, 
out. I'll leave that in the description too, so you can see this more in detail if you'd like. And the final piece of my big three, my sleep system. So I sleep very warm and I run warm most of the time. So I'll still try to push my quilts down a little bit lower if possible. I might even double up with my quilts, but if temperatures get very cold below zero degrees Fahrenheit, I like switching out to a sleeping bag. This reduces the likelihood of a possible draft, helps give me a lot more insulation and helps trap my heat. This is a Sea to Summit Alpine App 2 downfilled sleeping bag. This is what I'm going to use in very harsh conditions. I'm not going to be using this all of the time, but it's nice to have for those certain trips, or I can even use this on trips where I might end up using a tarp, just because it does give me a good amount of extra warmth. The foot box is waterproof. The mummy style hood have a neck baffle. There's a pocket in here for my electronics. A very, very comfortable sleeping bag. And I've used this on multiple trips now for times when it is appropriate. The bag is pretty light for the type of bag that it is but it is very bulky. So that's when my hyperlight packs would come into play if I anticipate that I'm going to need something like this. Regardless of how warm that bag is, my sleep system is only going to be as good as my sleeping pad. For the winter time, I want something that has a very high R value. So over the years, I've been using the Thermarest NeoAir X-Therm. I go with the regular wide has a very high R value, I believe of 6.9 or 7. So I get a really good barrier in low temperatures from cold drafts and the cold underneath me. Been really happy with their pads over the years. I haven't had any major issues with them. And just as an extra protective barrier, I'll still use and carry a close cell phone pad like my Gossamer Gear Thin Light Pad. This I use on its own during the three season for certain trips, but this helps increase the R value very slightly with my Thermarest pad. Helps keep it in place on the floor of my shelter. And it also gives me a little bit of extra protection from anything on the ground underneath. And if something were to go wrong with my pad, at least I would still have something giving me a little bit of a barrier from the cold ground. If I'm not using my Gossamer Gear pad, I can use my Thermarest Ridge Rest pad instead. Or z light this has a reflective material to it it's also a little bit thicker than the thin light pad and if i'm using this one i'll actually lay this on top of my x therm pad just to help reflect heat a little bit more and if something did happen to the x therm at least i still have this underneath me i find that the reflective material does help a little bit in those very very cold conditions and to close things out I have my trusty Sea to Summit Eros down pillow. Down will give me a little bit of insulation from the cold. And this has gone with me on multiple backpacking trips and through hikes over the last four or five years now. Still holding up really well and I find it to be very comfortable. And one other item that I'll bring with me for just around camp in the winter is a pair of Goose Feet Gear down socks. These are very light, very packable, not for walking around in, but they help give me a little bit of extra warmth and comfort in the winter time when I'm inside of my shelter. So those are my big three or big four, if you will. I'm going to get into some of the clothing that I'll have with me and we'll kick things off with a jacket that I'll wear around camp and what I can use also as part of my sleep system if I need to. And that jacket is a synthetic jacket. This is the Enlightened Equipment Torrid Apex jacket with the hood. It has a full zip and a couple of side zippers so I can stick my hands in there if I get cold, put hand warmers in there, put electronics in there. This is a very comfortable jacket, but this is just for static, not when I'm active. So this is mostly for around camp. 
or as part of my sleep system. I could put this on during breaks if I'm stopping for a quick break if I need to. And if I'm expecting it to be really cold, I'll switch the full zip for the enlightened equipment toward apex pullover. So this has a half zip instead of the full zip and a big, huge kangaroo style pocket in the front. Do have to be a little bit more careful of things falling out of this pocket because there are no zippers like the other one but I have the hood on this one too and I find that having this in place of the zipper does help give me a little bit of extra warmth. There's also a toggle down at the bottom so I can cinch it down around my waist and reduce cold drafts from coming up under the jacket. Been really happy with these jackets over the years for winter time and I will carry them in shoulder season too just for times when it might be a little bit chillier. And then for my lower half I'll carry a pair of enlightened equipment torrid apex pants. These are very simple, no pockets, just a cinch cord at the top. Again, not hiking in these just for around camp and as part of my sleep system if I need to. I've been very happy with these as well. For times when I am active, I've been really happy and impressed with PolarTech Alpha Direct over the last couple of years now. This material has been a game changer for me out there. And this is the Senshi Designs Lark, also known as the PolarTech Alpha Direct 90. This has a half zip as well, so I can vent a little bit if I need to. But the fabric does that really well on its own already. Because this is made out of a 90 GSM, I do find it to be a little bit warmer than some of the lighter weight Polar Tech Alpha Direct fabrics out there. So I'll wear this in conditions where it's around the teens or colder. The nice hood that I can wear as part of my sleep system too if I need to. And the fabric is pretty durable, dries very fast, it wicks really well. It's just been overall fantastic for me. But most of the time, I'll still wear the lighter weight PolarTech Alpha Direct 60. This is formerly known as the Ren by Sunshi Designs. Again, a half zip. And this is a little less durable, a little bit lighter in weight, breathes really well, dries fast, just like the Alpha 90, and also has the hood. And I've worn this comfortably in temperatures ranging between about 16 to 17 degrees Fahrenheit up to 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Both of these are active layers so if I'm standing around camp I definitely want to have a shell or something over it otherwise the wind and cold will cut right through it. So these are more for while I'm hiking and the enlightened equipment stuff is more for when I'm not hiking. And for my outer layers, I've been using the Arc'teryx Zeta SL jacket and the Arc'teryx Zeta SL pants. So this is made out of Gore-Tex Packlite. It's a two layer waterproofing and it's been pretty durable with a pack on. I haven't had any major issues with it. it has a nice toggle in the back to cinch the hood down. The jacket also has two zippered pockets. Other than that, it's very light and simple. Sheds snow really well and freezing rain. Also has some Velcro cuffs to cinch it down around my wrist a little bit more and a toggle at the bottom to cinch down around the waist. It's been a fantastic jacket over the last four or five years now. I don't believe that they're making this jacket anymore or the Zeta series in general, but this has been a piece that I've been really happy with for the winter time. The pants are very simple. They have a front zipper and a button snap. No pockets though, and long zippers that come up pretty high on the legs, so these are easy to get on and off without having to take my winter footwear off. Same Gore-Tex light material, nice and light, and this has worked really well for me as well. Very different from my traditional three season jacket, which is made out of Gore-Tex Shake Dry with the waterproof layer on the outside as the face fabric. So three season Arc'teryx Norvan SL and Winter Arc'teryx Zeta SL. Then my gloves over the years for winter have been the Arc'teryx 
Fission SV gloves. These are made of Gore-Tex and they have synthetic insulation. Good amount of comfort and good dexterity. So I can still do things with these gloves on. They have the gauntlet style, which comes up a bit higher on the forearm. So I get additional protection from that. And if I need my fingers and I don't want something as bulky, I can always wear a liner glove inside of this, but I've been really happy with these. They're very warm and in the winter, time I'll actually pack two pairs of gloves just in case one pair gets really soaking wet on specific trips where I'm planning on being out for an extended period of time. And then for my lower half, I'll have an extra protective barrier with some mountaineering gaiters. These are with Gore-Tex and I believe these are the REI mountaineering gaiters. I'm not sure if these are made anymore either, but they've been serving me really well over the years. This gaiter comes up just on under my knee has a nice cinch at the top to keep it secure and then this has worked really well with really thick mountaineering boots but also with my lighter weight and less bulky footwear that I might be wearing throughout the winter. My socks I'll pack extra pairs of socks for the winter time just like I would with my gloves. If I can get away with it I'll still wear my favorite Injinji toe socks. I'll just go with something that's a bit higher like a crew sock or or a boot sock. I've been wearing toe socks for the last couple of years and I find them to work really well for me and to be the most comfortable, but I am a little bit more prone to having each toe get a little bit colder, similar to if I were wearing a glove with my hands versus wearing a mitten. So if I am anticipating being somewhere that's very, very cold, I'll still wear a regular sock, whether that's sock going over my Injinji toe sock socks or just the sock on its own. These are the darn tough mountaineering socks. My winter footwear over the years, I've been wearing the Ultra Lone Peak Mid 4 RSMs and I had to retire them a couple of winters ago. So last year I ended up picking up a new pair of footwear for the winter. And that footwear is the Ultra Olympus 5 Mid Gore-Tex. So I do have a video going over this shoe a little bit more in detail, which you can check out in a link for it in the video description below. I'm hoping to get more use out of this shoe this winter. It hasn't really happened too much yet. It's been abnormally mild. For winter backpacking, this is my dedicated winter backpacking shoe. And if I need a dedicated crampon or something a little bit more substantial with insulation, then I'll wear my Scarpa Mont Blancs. Still up in the air with these, not comfortable giving feedback yet just due to the limited amount of mileage I have with this shoe but you can be sure that once I do I will have something else up on this channel going over how the shoe has been holding up for me once it gets a lot more extended use out on the trail. And for head and face protection I've been wearing the Outdoor Research Vigor Plus balaclava has a really nice waffle style fleece design overall i've been really happy and comfortable with this balaclava on the trips where i've needed it <laughs> want to say hi to the camera and then for eye protection i've been wearing the smith squad snow goggles. These have interchangeable lenses, so depending on the conditions I'm going to be expecting while I'm out backpacking, I can change those lenses out, help reduce snow glare. The foam also helps insulate me a little bit and give me a little bit of additional wind protection. So depending on the winter trip, this is something else that I might be wearing. And my water treatment will be a little bit different than it would be for three season especially when the conditions are below freezing. I don't want to compromise my filter, like my Sawyer Squeeze, and having the droplets inside of the filter end up freezing overnight and possibly damaging the internal components of the filter. So during the winter, I like to purify my water when it's below freezing, and I like to do that with, with the Stairpen Ultralight UV Water Purifier. This is USB rechargeable. 
and it purifies up to one liter in 90 seconds. Because this relies on batteries and it's also a little bit more prone to getting damaged or broken, I will still carry some backup tablets. Or in a worst case scenario, I can always boil my water or melt snow. And then to carry my water, I like carrying it in a very lightweight Nalgene bottle. A wide mouth opening works beautifully with my SteriPen Ultralight Purifier. I also like storing these inside of an uh, insulated bottle cover. This is by 40 Below. And this is just a uh, thick neoprene. So I put the bottle inside of it, seals up, and then there's a loop on the back so I can put my hip belt through that or I can secure it somewhere else or I can store it just inside of my bottle pocket. The other thing I like to do in the winter with my water bottles is store them upside down. I can do that inside of here or I can flip this upside down and doing so, will force the air to be at the bottom of my bottle rather than the top and help prevent any water from freezing around the lid and freezing all of the water inside. If I don't have an insulated cover like this, I can actually use a thick sock as a sleeve and I'll just store this upside down inside of my pack with other things surrounding it to help prevent anything from freezing inside. During the winter time, these are indispensable. I'll also pack a small thermos just for making hot chocolates or if I'm making hot soups. And this thermos has a tiny little cup and a little pour spout so I can have something nice and hot throughout the day rather than just drinking cold water all of the time. And my food storage is a little bit different in the winter time too. It all depends on what the rules and regulations are for the area. I don't like using the PCT method as much because I don't want things to end up freezing or to be having to deal with throwing line up when the trees might be covered in ice and snow. So I like to use an ERSAC. This is the ERSAC Major XL. If the area allows for it, then I can just store it away from my shelter about 200 feet away and I'll line it with an odor-proof bag. And in areas where an ERSAC might not be allowed, I'll use a bear canister. But most of the time I find that this is allowed. So I end up going with this just because it's a lot more pliable inside of my pack. And my cook system is a little different for the winter time too. So I'm going to be carrying a slightly bigger pot just so I can melt snow if I need to. Something this big will also work a lot better with my stove that I'm going to be showing you. And if temperatures are well below 20 degrees Fahrenheit, I like using a liquid gas stove. So I have my windscreen here. I have a heat shield have my regulator pump and my burner. And this is the MSR Whisper Light Universal. So this just connects to my fuel canister, which is separate, and I pressurize that canister. And then I can use this in temps well below freezing, even below zero degrees Fahrenheit. Don't have to worry about performance as much as I would with a canister stove. This has always been very reliable, and I love that I can also maintain this in the field if I need to. And it nests nicely inside of my cook pot. One other very important item that I will always have with me on the trail for winter backpacking trips and any trips really is a satellite communication device like the Garmin InReach Mini. This handy little device connects to a network of satellites. So if I don't have cell service, I can still send and receive messages through this device. I can also track my progress as I'm out backpacking. I can check the weather forecast and I can send out an SOS signal with an emergency message if I am in an immediate emergency situation where my life is at risk 
or I am not able to evacuate out on my own. So I'll just clip this to my pack strap to have it easily accessible. So I always have it at the ready if needed. And it is also USB rechargeable. So I can recharge this when the battery is getting low. Most of the time I like to just check in back home and let my significant other know that I made it to camp okay and to check the weather reports. But it's nice to have just as an additional item of safety, especially in the winter time and when I'm alone out on the trail. And my traction will be dependent on the conditions as well. Sometimes I might be able to wear a pair of micro spikes other times I may need a dedicated pair of crampons and other times I might just end up wearing my snowshoes in some locations I may even be packing all three so most of the time I'll be wearing the Catula micro spikes these have been very reliable and durable for me over the years, and I do keep them sharpened. And these are suitable for moderately technical terrain, hard packed snow, ice. They've worked really well with bulky winter footwear, but also my less bulky footwear that I wear in the winter time. And for terrain that is very steep and technical, and I have a lot of exposure, I've been wearing the Petzl Sarkins, and I store them in a Hyperlite Mountain Gear crampon bag just to help prevent the sharp edges from cutting into any of my gear or my pack. And the last thing that I like bringing with me on my winter backpacking trips is a snow claw. So this is not a replacement for a proper avalanche shovel. If I'm traveling in an area where I need something like that, I will end up using one. But on most backpacking trips in the winter, I'll pack this with me. This has a really good edge for hard snow and another edge for soft snow. I can use this as a windshield with my stove if I needed to. I can use this to sit down on it on top of snow or ice. I've also used this to dig out around where I'm going to be setting up my camp for the night. And I've also used this as a makeshift snow anchor on a couple of trips just to see how it would perform. And it worked really well for that too. Nice and light. This just straps right to the outside of my pack and it's there when I need to access it. So there you have it. That is a bunch of the winter gear and winter clothing that I like using using on certain winter backpacking trips. I hope that this helps give you a little bit more of an idea of some of the differences with what I'm carrying in the winter time compared to my regular three season trips. I mean, the sleeping bag alone is very close to what my three season base weight is. And if you have any questions on any of this gear in my video or my other videos, please feel free to leave them in a comment below, or you can contact me at any time at reachyoursummit.net. Also, if any of you are winter backpackers, let me know what you're using out on the trails. I'd love to see what everyone else is using, what works best for you. And if you like this video, hit the like button and consider subscribing to my channel. I'm always adding new content to it. I have a lot of exciting things planned for this channel in the near future. So subscribe and hit the notification bell. I want to thank you all for watching. Thank you for subscribing. I greatly appreciate it. I hope you all had a very happy holiday and a new year. And I hope that you have a lot of time out on the trails in 2024. And thank you for watching. And until the next one, I'll see you out there.